Okay, continuing on adding our species to our alignment explorer here in Mega. So we have just added the pan troglodytes, and I'm just going to go and change his name here. So I'm going to change it to pan troglodytes and chimp in parentheses here. So pan troglodytes, parentheses chimp. Okay, not chimp, chimp. All right, so... Uh, now I have three species there. I want to add about five more species so I can get a good phylogenetic tree on the evolution of this BRCA2 breast cancer gene. So um, going back to my um, my blast search here, so I just added pentroglodytes. Uh, the next one is a bonobo chimp, which is actually even closer related to humans than, than the regular chimpanzee. Um, so I'm going to add him. I'm going to add the orangutan. Uh, Pongo abelii. I'm going to skip Homo sapiens. This little guy's a monkey, um, and so on. And then I'm going to keep going down actually till I get to a killer whale. So um, one more time, let me just show you how I would add these guys. So if I added the bonobo, I'm going to go to his accession number. I'm going to open that link in a new window. And here it is. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to write down my coding sequence um, first base here, so 274, so I'm going to write that down, and uh, and then I'm going to add him to my alignment. Hit OK, and boom, there he is, and then I can change his name to just kind of get rid of, just shorten it up a little bit so I have less stuff to deal with here. So I'm going to just go like this, and I know happen to know and if I didn't, I could use Google Images, but I happen to know this is a bonobo chimpanzee. Um, and uh, anyway, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to add four more species. You want your final species to be something um, a lot less genetically identical to the human than these primates were. So we call that an outgroup. Um, he kind of anchors the tree. So I'll just kind of show you where I'm going to be going with this. I'm going to keep scrolling down. Um, I mean, look at this. Uh, Boss Taurus is a cow. Uh, there's a, a cat right there, um, and uh, et cetera. What you don't want to do is you don't want to go about below 80% identity because it'll it'll make it take a long time for the sequence um, to process just because of um, the computer's trying to match everything up. So um, I'm going to probably go down maybe as far as a horse, or um, actually I'm probably going to go down to the killer whale right here. I think killer whale is 84% genetically identical to the human sequence. How cool is that? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pause the thing, and when I come back, I'll have my eight species in there. You keep going um, with yours, and I'll meet you back there in one sec. Ta-da! I've now added a total of eight species here, so hopefully you've done that to yours as well. Um, no, so these are in a different order here than I had before, but I added this little guy, a Calithrix jackus, who is a common marmoset, a little tiny monkey, a horse. Um, I also added the killer whale and the orangutan. So I now have eight species. Uh, most of them are primates, but I have two outgroups, a horse and a killer whale, which we wouldn't expect to be very close to the human. Uh, but if you can see from the identity back on the, um, on the blast page, you can see that it's still pretty far. So um, the Equus calibus is the horse, and he had an 86% identity. And then the Orcinus uh, orca is the killer whale, and he has 84% identity. So 84% genetically identical for this gene to a human. Okay, so now what do we do with this? Well, now you can go ahead and uh, lower your blast page. What we're going to be working with now is this um, alignment explorer. So let's uh, go ahead and start with a human. Now notice that the first uh, bases that are listed here is GGT. What we have to do is get to the coding sequence that actually, the DNA sequence that actually codes for that start codon, methionine. So think back to protein synthesis or go review my old lecture. Um, anytime you are um, taking DNA, transcribing it to messenger RNA, that messenger RNA creates triplet triplets of uh, RNA bases called codons. And each codon codes for a different amino acid according to the genetic code. And then you string together these amino acids and you get your protein, which codes for your trait. 
So always in this process, the first amino acid to get coded by mRNA is methionine. And methionine is coded by the mRNA sequence AUG. So adenine uracil guanine, or I like to say the pirate arog, AUG, AUG. So that's the mRNA codon. Um, so if you think back to what happened with the DNA transcript, we had TAC on the DNA, thymine, adenine, cytosine. So T became A on the mRNA, the A, adenine, became U, uracil on the mRNA, and the C on the DNA became guanine on the mRNA. So, um, but instead of looking for the TAC in the coding sequence, we're going to look for the other side of the DNA that it was base paired to. So TAC, TAC on one strand, so its partner strand on the DNA would have been A, T, G. So what we're going to be looking for in our coding sequences for each of these species is ATG, and we'll know that that signals the start codon for methionine. Again, if this was over your head, just um, make sure you go ahead and, um, and watch the protein synthesis video. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead and click on um, Homo sapiens here. We need to find the coding sequence. So you probably wrote it down, but if you didn't, not all is lost, because if you right-click, if you're using Windows, or double-click if you're using a Mac, to open this little drop-down window, um, you can go back to where it says Refer to GenBank, and that will take you back to the page for that species, for, in this case, Homo sapiens. And so when he calls back, you can just scroll down and find that CDS coding sequence here. And, and remember this number, 229. So hopefully you already wrote this down, but if not, you can get to it this way. 229. So that means that 229 is where we should find that start coton. Um, so ATG, because we're dealing with DNA sequence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click anywhere in the Homo sapiens sequence here. And then I'm going to go down to this little window. And it, it'll say five there. Get rid of that and type in that number we just looked up, 229. So that's the 229th base. And then hit enter or return. And lo and behold, what gets highlighted here? The A of the ATG. How amazing is that? How does it know that? That's where the amino acid sequence coding region would start. So what we need to do is delete everything before that ATG. ATG. That's evolutionary junk. That's the stuff that gets spliced out um, before translation in protein synthesis. So how are we going to do that? Instead of starting with the ATG, we're going to go one base before that to this other, what happens to be an A here. Okay, so find ATG and go one base before that. Click that. Okay, so it's one base before ATG. And now what we're going to do is highlight all the bases in that sequence that come before it, and then we're going to delete them. So um, easiest way to do this, uh, if you hold down your shift key on your keyboard and hit home, so this is if you're using a Windows, shift home will highlight everything before that. Now, if you're using a Mac like I am, sorry guys, we got to, ours is going to take a little longer. Instead of being able to go uh, shift home and select everything prior to that ATG. We actually have to use our left arrow key to select it. So we're going to hit command shift and then the left arrow key. And uh, it's just going to have to do this until it gets back to the beginning of the sequence. So it takes a little bit of time. So um, this mega program actually is more Windows friendly than Mac friendly, if you haven't noticed by now. So I'm just selecting everything that came before that ATG all the way back to the beginning. Okay, so uh, once you've selected everything that comes before that ATG sequence, um, one of the things you could do, there's several ways to do this, or, um, and this is certainly easier if you're using a Mac like I am, just go here to where it says cut and press it. And that should cut everything else um, that you had selected before the ATG sequence. And so check it out. Now our first base is the first coding sequence for methionine, ATG. So um, you know, again, that back translates to TAC on the DNA, which transcribes to AUG on mRNA, which codes for methionine. Okay, so what we have to do is do this for all of these species. We have to put in the uh, base number where the ATG sequence starts. So I'm going to, for example, I'll just do the uh, 
killer well. I'm going to go here. I'm going to refer to GenBank if I didn't write it down. If I wrote it down, I get to skip this stuff. And I'm going to go down to where it says CDS coding sequence. And for the ORCA, it is number 145. Okay, so 145. So I'm just going to click somewhere in the killer well sequence. Come down to site number. Delete what's already there and hit 145. Return. And lo and behold, what's selected? The A of A, T, G. Magic, right? So now I'm going to go one base before the A, T, G. I'm going to select everything before that. All the way back to zero. And if you look down at the site number, you can actually watch the progress here. Okay, so now I'm at uh, one there. And I'm going to cut it out. And ta-da, now I've got ATG. Check it out. Human, killer whale. We haven't even officially aligned this thing yet, but look at all the bases that match up there. How cool is that? And you can see where there's a mutation. Like the human had a, a T, a thymine, right in that spot, whereas the orca had a G, a guanine, but the rest are the same. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to keep doing that, and you keep doing that. We're going to go through all these species, find the base number, which um, starts the ATG sequence, the coding region. And um, once we've got all those aligned, I'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Check it out. Now, I have not even officially aligned these things yet. All I've done is gone and found the start code on for each one uh, using the technique I just showed you. And so now that they're all starting at their coding sequence, look at this, all these different species from a human down to a killer whale, a horse, and all these primates. Look how similar we are in our, in our DNA sequences for the breast cancer gene. The breast cancer gene is found in a whale. It's found in a horse. It's found in cute little, little monkeys and, and chimpanzees and orangutans. So everywhere you see a star at the top, that means that the base is exactly the same at that position across all these guys. So for example, notice that um, all of these animals, even the whale and the horse had an adenine at this position, except for the orangutan. Somewhere in the evolutionary trajectory leading to orangutans, um, we had a guanine instead of an adenine. Um, but chances are the common ancestor that we all shared had an adenine and some kind of mutation happened during the lineage to the orangutan. Um, so really amazing stuff. So we have not actually aligned this yet. We still have one more step to do before we do that. And that is we need to truncate the end of this um, because um, if you don't, it takes the alignment a long time to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll um, all the way over here to the right. So we're going to scroll all the way over to the right and you want to go all the way over until we get to this. So see how um, this killer whale happens to be missing a huge chunk towards the end here. That's going to screw up the analysis. It's going to make it take hours to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to truncate everything right there. We're just going to cut everybody off there. So if you go up to the gray box and click it, it selects that entire column of bases. And then what you need to do is select everything to the right of that, so everything to the end.